Yeah, yeah, a whole lot of different swagger. They were walking around and dancing around and, and, and all kinds of stuff. So this is our first senior class, like I said, and, and these guys are finally starting to act like like a football team, like you know, like a team that's kind of kind of made it, you know, a, a little bit of a of a of a coming out type party. So it's a little bit different swag right now. Winning makes everything better, right? Coach Gonzalez and his West Campus Cougars have some newfound swagger, and rightfully so, in big board sports. It is a great time for the South San Antonio West Campus Cougars who beat San Anthony 48 to nothing last week for their first varsity football win since West Campus reopened in 2021. Their last varsity dub was in 2007 before the campus closed down. Led by Coach Gonzalez, the Cougars are 1-1 one one this season and feeling much better about themselves. The Cougars play in District 15 through A Division 2 and still have two more games to go before they start district play. Now we stopped by Shepherd Middle School yesterday with the Cougars practice to ask them about that winning feeling uh, I'm excited we've been we've been working at it all off season you know getting in the weight room a lot uh, we've been focused way more lately and and that just went towards the win mainly it was wonderful to be able to come off that win just the only thing is how you give is to the Lord above um, he's been with us since day one and just that one is it's amazing to be out here every single day just knowing that we got that one finally it's, it's been rough you know year one we started in the middle of, of, of uh, COVID 2020 and uh, you know we started with only freshmen so uh, it's, it's been a big buildup we faced a lot of adversity uh, throughout the four years here uh, and you know that's kind of been our, our identity uh, for four years just kind of playing with a, with a chip on our shoulders somebody that a team that faces a lot of adversity and, and gets through it and, and, and sees the obstacle as the way uh, so so, you know, this this win has just been it's been huge for us to finally get this monkey off our back and, and finally see some success. West Campus will go for its second straight win tomorrow night when they host the 2 and Lyle Pirates at 7 p.m. Here's the schedule for tonight. Brennan versus Harlan and Ferris Stadium. Warren versus Holmes at the Gus. Both games kick at 7. And Southwest will play at Laredo Martin tonight at 7 as well. And Carnivore football is working hard to rebound from their 28-14 week one loss at the UTEP Miners. The Cardinals led the Miners 7 to nothing and 14 to 7, but gave up 21 unanswered points, 14 of those in the second half to come up short. The Cardinals went toe to toe with UTEP, but they left some plays on the field and that cost them the game. You, you got to run the football better, you got to stop the run, and then you got to score when you're inside your five. We had two opportunities inside the five, um, one a turnover on downs and then another one as a turnover. Um, so those are those are points of the game that, that we have to correct. Now, when you look at the tape, there's a lot of positives. You know, we have a good football team and we, you know, man for man, toe to toe, I thought we we were as good of a football team as those guys. We just have four or five plays that if if, if we execute and we do our job, it's it's a totally different ball game. We just got to execute. We left we left some stuff on the field and, and you know, we've went back and watched the film and, and, and corrected it. And, you know, we're going to have a great week of practice and come out and execute this Saturday. I mean, it was a lot closer game than it might have uh, felt like, but overall, we just didn't execute the way we wanted to. That's the thing. We prepared, but we weren't. We didn't execute it the way we needed to. So it's a growing process. You know, new team. That was the first time playing as a team, but it's excuses are out the window. We just got to play better. UIW will play at the University of Northern Colorado Saturday at 3 in the afternoon. All right, and we'll be watching. Yep. Thank you very much, Larry. So uh, coming up, we're going to go front and center with the airmen who are trained to handle explosive threats. You're going to learn more about the G JBSA at Lackland Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team. It's a mouthful, but they do a lot. Stick around. Welcome back tonight. We're going to go behind the gates of JBSA Lackland, a group of highly trained and skilled airmen protect the base, the city and the country by taking on threats. Tonight, Jonathan Goto takes us front and center into the high stakes world of EOD technicians. Yeah, you can pull. Really, uh, Air Force and the U.S. in particular didn't really begin uh, explosive ordnance disposal operations till about the 40s, mid 40s. Hank says it was actually the British that were the first generation of explosive ordnance technicians. Uh, prior to that, explosives have been around since the 10th century. Technology quickly advancing and weaponry becoming more and more complex, the American Armed Forces understood the demand for EOD. They created this profession, uh, bomb disposal. Uh, technicians and they basically were the guys charged with going out there and removing these fuses and making these bombs safe uh, to move and eventually dispose of. 
Senior Airman David Ethan Lane says the core mission is always aircraft support. So that involves dealing with in-flight emergencies when they land. If it has to do with ordnance, uh, we'll go safe the aircraft. That way the maintainers can figure out what went wrong and then we can generate sorties and do all that air power stuff. Serving as the Air Force's bomb squad, these EOD technicians work in the most extreme of conditions and environments. A critical and tactical component in maintaining air superiority. So global war on terror, the enemy started using improvised explosive devices a lot. And so we became a core uh, component to the mission because without us, we didn't have freedom of movement. We couldn't do anything with those IEDs blowing up everywhere. So that is kind of where EOD came really into the spotlight. JBSA Lackland's EOD supports the entire South Texas area, 57 counties and 14 military installations. Training numerous times throughout the year with civilian bomb squads on interoperability. That way, in case we get called out on a, like, let's say somebody's uncle died and they have a couple ordnance items in their, in their house, if we have to go and assist them, they'll know exactly how we work and we know exactly how they work. Every branch of the military has their designated emergency ordnance disposal teams. Our badge is a four, it's all four services, Navy, Marines, Air Force, and the Army. Uh, we all go to the same school and we uh, get the same base uh, education and schooling. Technicians undergo a 10-month rigorous training period. We're supposed to be training about 16 to 20 hours a week uh, before the guys that come here fresh out of school. Um, they're, they're training every single day uh, for about 7 to 10 hours a day. EOD teams working with the latest cutting-edge technology. We have two new robot systems that are brand new to the career field, to the actual um, the whole military. Robot systems that allow technicians to operate completely remote. And that way we don't have to go ourselves down onto a suspicious item or on a suspicious package. We're one of the uh, career fields that really embraces technology and, and incorporates it into our daily life and then especially into our operations. So that's been a big part of it and then just getting smarter doing things more remote and safer is always the goal. For EOD technicians there are only two options. Initial success or total failure. So we need experts that are able to identify the problem, render it safe, and mitigate the hazard. Um, and without us, I'm not sure who would do that in the Air Force. Final! Reporting front and center. Final! Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. This story was first published on our KSAT YouTube channel. If you want to watch more stories or you've missed any of our past newscasts, don't do that. Yeah, just scan that QR code that you see on your screen. It's going to take you right to our KSAT YouTube page. And stick around because we'll be right back after this. We're looking over into Hawaii because attorneys in that state are asking a judge to expand a lawsuit against the Hawaii, against Hawaiian Electric. That's the company that was accused of causing the devastating wildfire last month. The group wants the lawsuit to include Charter Communications and the telephone company Hawaiian Telecom, along with private and public landowners. The amended lawsuit also claims that some landholders were negligent for allowing, allowing highly flammable vegetation on their properties, which contributed to the rapid spread of that fire. We'll keep you posted on that lawsuit. Now, new applications for unemployment benefits actually dropped last week to 216,000. That's down 13,000 from last week's revised total, which shows the labor market is still pretty good. Now, claims have risen since the beginning of the year, but they've actually hovered near the 2019 average of about 218,000 for several months. People seeking an additional week of unemployment benefits actually fell by 40,000 to 1.68 million in the week ending August 26th. So decent jobs numbers there. All right, so now on a more local note, yeah, we have been talking about 101 degrees and I know if many of you sit back and you go, oh, whatever, they're gonna tell us about hot, dry, triple digit <laughs> temperatures. Well, hold on, I want you to sit up because Adam's got yes. some stuff to tell you. That's true, we, we have uh, some changes to talk about, a shift in our weather pattern, which means temperature change and rain chances return. We also have Hurricane Lee, category four, out in the Atlantic, that's barreling westward toward the U.S. Doesn't mean it's going to hit the U.S., but it's headed toward us. We're going to talk about some record challenging heat, then those rain chances in just a bit.
San Antonio police arresting two people in connection with a kidnap with kidnapping a couple from their home yesterday. SAPD says that Xavier Martinez and Felipe Valdez barged into the couple's home on the southwest side and took them. The couple's now reunited with their kids, and police say they're looking for a third suspect. Tonight, San Antonio police looking for the people who shot a woman as she was just driving down the street. Happened overnight on Baldwin Avenue near I-37. The victim telling police that she saw two people run out of a garage, and that's when they shot her. Right now, she's recovering in the hospital. The trial for a man accused of killing his mother's boyfriend continued today. During the Guyen Perez trial, the medical examiner took the stand and explained the gunshot wounds that were found on Luis Rosales. Closing arguments are expected to take place tomorrow, and Perez faces up to 99 years in prison. Also, a man pleaded guilty in federal court today in connection to the death of a woman who died of a fentanyl poisoning. Patrick James Hall was sentenced to 30 years in prison for dealing fentanyl disguised as oxycodone that killed Isabella Render in 2020. And that is your 60 second recap. Switching gears now, it's a special day. Therm Thurs. That's right. Also a lot going on. I'll send things on over to Adam Kasky. A lot going on. We have mm -hmm. some record challenging heat and then actually more record highs are likely to fall Then some rain chances and this special thermometer Thursday. So let's get right to it. First of all, our high temperature today, another record 103 that breaks the old record by three degrees and is at 11 degrees above average. And in case you're keeping tally at home, 71 100 degree days now so far this year and we're going to add to it. Take a look at our forecast here. 105 tomorrow, 103 Saturday by Sunday. We're at 102. And then temperatures take a little dip downwards by next week. Upper 90s Monday, Tuesday, and potentially mid 90s by Wednesday and Thursday. By the way, record highs likely Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're expecting to actually break the records those days. So let's talk about the overall weather pattern. Near Albuquerque, New Mexico, big blue H, the upper level high. Still very close to us, has a firm grip on our weather. We want it to move away. And actually it's going to, it's going to slowly be pushing its way westward. And that's going to open the door for some upper level energy and even a few weak cold fronts to head our way as we get into next week. And I stress weak cold fronts. Don't <laughs> hear the term cold front and think big changes headed our way. I showed you that temperature trend and I think at best we could be low to mid 90s for highs uh, by next week. But what it illustrates is an overall shift that allows other elements to help kickstart some showers as long as we have all the ingredients there. And I think at times Saturday through next week, we will have the ingredients and even the generalized look from a computer model still has a good chunk of Texas underneath that rainfall potential. It's still too early to tell how much, where and exactly when. But right now we've got a 20% chance on Saturday up to 30% Sunday and then similar chances Monday and Tuesday. Right now, Wednesday we have at 40%, maybe a little premature for that, uh, but that shows the highest likelihood because that's when a weak cold front could drop in and just help give us a little more lift. These numbers will be changing in the days ahead. This isn't a very well-defined system and change that's moving in. So anticipate some updates to that forecast. Check back in with the latest and uh, stay tuned to the case at Weather Authority app as well. 101 right now, dew point is 65, feels like 104. Rio, Rio Medina at 99 along with Bandera. Bulverde 100, New Braunfels 103 along with Stinson Airport on the south side. For the most part, low 100s now. As we go through the evening, 91 at 10 o'clock, a southeasterly wind at 10 to 15, at times gusting up to 20. We get that sea breeze, and that really helps increase the humidity as well. So very sticky out there this evening. Midnight, 88 degrees. We start the day tomorrow at 79. By noon, 95, then 105 for the high temperature. That's going to be a record by 4 degrees. And not much of a breeze, just variable at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Port SA 105 tomorrow, Bernie and Bulverde 102, Floresville 106 along with Nixon. So we're still feeling that summer like heat out there and record challenging and record breaking heat. But with the rain chances comes some lower temperatures. So at least we have something some of that to look forward to. And again, we will be modifying this forecast to so check back for updates.
<laughs> All right. <laughs> now comes the party. Uh, the party. Our very special Thermometer Thursday. A happy birthday coming up this Saturday to a very special KSAT 12 viewer. Born September 9th, 1929. An amateur meteorologist, a weather enthusiast out of Carrizo Springs, Texas. Number one Spurs fan, big sports fan overall. F has five children, eight grandchildren, seven great grandchildren. Wow. Betty Jo Wilson, we know Yay. you're watching. Yes, <laughs> Betty Jo. Happy birthday. Your daughter reached out and this thermometer is yours for your birthday. Saturday in Seguin is the celebration. So I want to say happy birthday, 95 years. This is fantastic. And by the way, if you want to win a, a homemade thermometer, go to KSAT, ksat.com slash thermometer. Okay, perfect. And you made that with your own. Hands. Oh, yeah. 100%. Betty Jo knows. She knows. She knows. As, as, as a fan. Yes. She knows. She knows. All right. Thank you so Happy much. birthday, Betty. Happy birthday to you, Betty Jo Wilson. And we'll be right back after this. So soon we're all going to have more access to a life-saving medication, Narcan, the medicine that reverses opioid overdoses. That's what we're talking about this week. You're going to start seeing it in more places like store shelves. Ivan Rodriguez explains what that means exactly for fighting the opioid epidemic. There have been more than a million drug overdose deaths in the U.S. since 1999. The chances are somebody you know and love does drugs. The widespread use of synthetic opioids exacerbating the crisis. You really need every tool that's available right now. One key tool, the Narcan branded naloxone nasal spray, is now available over the counter following approval by the FDA earlier this year. Narcan, and I have some here, is a medication that is just so easily sprayed up the nose and can reverse an opioid overdose within minutes. Dr. Scott Hadlin says this can be the new avenue for families of young adults struggling with addiction. We are actually at a point in the crisis where each week the equivalent to a high school classroom of teenagers dies from overdoses. And most of those overdoses are actually happening in people's homes. So there's the potential for a parent or other loved one to be able to respond. But at a suggested retail price of $44.99 for two doses, some advocates worry the price point is too high. However, Emergent Biosolutions, Narcan's manufacturer, says the company is lowering the cost for community groups, first responders, as well as state and local governments, while some insurance and state Medicaid programs also cover the full cost of the life-saving medication. Though not a solution to the opioid epidemic, advocates are hopeful this is a big step in the right direction. The more that we can do to normalize rescuing people who have experienced an overdose, the more we're going to help this crisis. In Atlanta, I'm Ivan Rodriguez. Streaming now. Um, we're about five to 600 bucks a month on, on water usage. Their water bill more than doubled from one month to the next after a pipe sprung a leak. We, we had a break. Uh, the ground movement happens all over San Antonio. A few weeks later, we get a bill in the mail for a million gallons of water, $15,580. That's just ridiculous. They've been bullying us, intimidating us. Now Saw says it's time to pay up or have the water shut off. KSAT investigates the water company's policies on outrageously high bills. Streaming now on these platforms. There's Hurricane Lee Category 4 out, way out there in the Atlantic, but it is headed westward between a Cat 4, Cat 5 over the next several days and by early next week between Bermuda and Puerto Rico. We'll keep you updated. Lastly, Betty Jo Wilson, just another happy yeah. birthday shout out to you. Turning 95 on Saturday. Congrats on winning the homemade thermometer. Certainly deserves the shout out. You get as many as you want. Probably 95, <laughs> Betty Jo, for each year you've been. It'll be 95 at least, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the night beat tonight.